shine, it's your time to shine Welcome to the showcase Yeah, yeah, stay on your grind Stay on your grind Welcome to yeah, the showcase Yeah, my way through Busting my way through Burning my way through like a ball of fire It's showcase and no case It's astronomical bringing you the phenomenal The center stage just a showcase with a K Taking your talent to the world It's time now for center stage The spotlight's on you So do what you do This is showcase and we ain't got time to waste Good evening, my name is Keisha Snacks Welcome to the showcase at the spotlight I'm um, with your host Get up, everything started. We have Jack O'Halloran here. Hi, Jack. Hi, Welcome how are you? Show. I just wanted to want you to introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from. So just give us a little, small little uh, info about you. I've read your bio. I just want you to just go ahead and just give the audience a little feel of who you are before we go further. Well, my name is Jack O'Halloran. I was uh, born in Philadelphia, raised in South Jersey. And I presently uh, lived in California. I lived in Europe. And uh, wow. I presently live in St. Petersburg, Florida. Look at you, traveling the world. That's amazing. So I, I wanted to ask you, you know, you were you were a, a big time champion when you were in, in the 60s and 70s. You were boxing. I, I started I out to playing. Know about yeah, I want to know what happened. How did this happen? How did you start out with, with boxing? What made you want to be a boxer? I started out there? playing football. I was uh, I was I was with the New York Jets, and then I went down to Philadelphia. And it was at a time when you couldn't play until your class graduated college back in the '60s. So we had a a farm team on the East Coast uh, down in Tinicum, uh, and we and a lot of us. Christie Brothers, a lot of people played there until their class graduated, and we went up to play in the in the pros. And, and when I was eligible to play, I had a lot of friends down in Philly playing, and I said, well, I told you, Bank, I want to go down to Philadelphia. He said, we got home here. So I was about to play in Philadelphia, and Muhammad Ali won the title. And I said to some friends of mine in Philly, I can beat that guy. And I wound up in the gymnasium. Uh, boxing and uh, boxed for nine years as a world ranked fighter. Muhammad and I were signed four times to fight. He was a, he was a very dear friend. And, um, he was California heavyweight champion for a couple of years and New Jersey yeah. heavyweight champion and a few other deals. And I'm a Hall of Fame guy in New Jersey, Pennsylvania. So I, yeah. you know, when I got out of boxing, uh, they came to me. They came to me first when I was living up in Boston, and I was just I was undefeated by like twelve fights. And Steve McQueen was doing the Thomas Crown Affair in Boston. He and I became good friends, and he wanted me to go in the movie business and come to Hollywood. And I said I don't think so, and so I turned that down. And then when I Knocked out the number two ranked heavyweight in California, Emmanuel Ramos. And Muhammad and I were trying to put a fight together. And they wanted me to do the picture of the Great White Hope with James Earl Jones, which was the biggest movie in Hollywood at the time. And I turned that down. And when I retired from boxing, they, I had a commercial agent. She came to me and said, they want you to do a picture called Farewell, My Lovely with Robert Mitchum. So I went to Hollywood. They gave me a screen test, and Mitchum said it's either him or I don't do the movie. So I blame it all on Robert Mitchum. When you were uh, finished boxing and you, you went over to Fair My Lady, did you like you had the body figure for this uh, to be this actor? Were you like one of the hottest out there this time? Because you know you coming from boxing going into acting, right? I, I could say that you must have been like you know chiseled, very good looking. I was. Young man at the time, yeah. yeah I so was. that had to be really big for you, you know. Well, I just had a natural ability, and I had a and I had a coach called Robert Mitchum. You know, Mitchum <laughs> was the uh, Mitchum became like a mentor, became like a father figure. Okay, and I, that's uh, wonderful. So I was, you know, I was I was still training in the gym, and I uh, I did farewell, my lovely, and then I did King Kong, and I I was doing another film and I um, was in the gym in LA training and 
I found this young man, Frankie Lyles, and I took him under the wing and trained Pardon? I think I know Frankie Lyles. Frankie Lyles, I made him super middleweight champion of the world. Yeah, look at that. I took him and trained him, and uh, he came from, he he lived, Frankie lived in, uh, he's a Philly kid. And he was right. uh, living up, uh, he was box training in Detroit, and they threw him out of the Kronk gym, and he came to L.A., and, and he was training at the Juicy, Juicy Gym, and I, and I was training and working out, and I watched him, and I took him aside, we had a little conversation, and uh, and I told him, if you did everything I said in six months, I'll make you champion of the world. And I did that. I made yeah. a middleweight champion of the world. He was a middleweight, yeah. super middleweight champion. That's and a huge he, accomplishment. Oh, he beat everybody. He, he, Frankie yeah. was a very good fighter. And and it started out Freddie Roach. Freddie Roach right. worked in the corner with us, and that's how he became so popular because he was working with a world champion. And and um, and then I just stayed in the movie business, and I went on and did uh, several Dragnet and some other pictures. And uh, Who did you play in Superman? The character Nan. There were three super villains that flew around. I was the big okay. guy. It was Terrence Stamp, Sarah Douglas, and myself. The three supervillains. We right. around the same as Superman. Right. So Superman 1 and that Superman must have been 2. Really fun. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. It was a great movie. We, we had, uh, it worked out very well. I wrote a book. And, now, uh, what, would you say, what would you say was like your best? film that you felt like was like your best hit at the time? What was the, the number one that you felt like, you know, on the set, there was great chemistry between you and your cast members? Uh, what was that like? I tell you, every, you, film, like, I did, you every film I did w- was 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 pretty good. and uh, But Farewell, My Lovely was the most memorable because of Mitchum and Charlotte Rampling and Anthony Zerbe. We had a great cast. Uh, it was right. a great film. It worked out very well. Superman was a great movie with a great cast of Superman, Brando and Gene Hackman. Hackman and I had just finished the movie called March or Die when we went into Superman. And I did a picture of King Kong with Jesse Lang and uh, and uh, Jeffrey Bridges. And uh, we had a great cast in that movie. And I did the ball. Did you, have, a, Sorry? Did you have an acting coach? No, Robert Mitchum. Robert Mitchum, that's the one that trained you up to be to your auditions and everything. Do you know who Robert Mitchum is? No, I I don't know. Robert Mitchum is one of the most greatest actors that ever walked in front of the screen. Wow. Robert Mitchum is a great actor. I might have, if if I see his face, I'm sure I know who that is. He did 143 pictures, so I'm sure he's. I'm sure, right? (laughs) I have to know that. Uh, That's amazing. Robert was a great actor, and he was a great friend. And now, so, when you are you married now? I have a, a life partner. Yeah. So, so were you? Um, at, did you meet your life partner at that time of your life when you were this, <clears> actually met her in nineteen sixty six? Met her in nineteen sixty eight when I was boxing in Boston, and our lives crossed over, over, over. And but now we're now we're together, and we'll be here together until we check out. Wow, that is amazing. That's an amazing love story. I tell you a funny story. I tell you a funny story. I met her at a club in Boston, and uh, and I was <clears throat> and I was with Steve McQueen. And I was up on the stage singing, and she walked in with another person, and I put the mic down and went down and picked her up, threw her over my shoulder, and said, "You're going home with me. Let's go." <laughs> you knew her from the from the moment you saw her. That was that yeah, was the one. That was it. Done done sealed delivered. That's right. That's beautiful. And that amazing transition from boxing and going right into acting. It was just like you guys, you were just going on the up and up. Yep. Oh my god. Yeah, it worked extremely well. Well, can you hold just one second? Sure. Nikki, I'm doing a podcast. Can I call you right back? Yeah, just let me call you right back. I'm doing a, a Zoom thing right now. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. It's all good. Um, 
Yeah, so, you know, the film industry is, uh, I've done a lot of movies. I've done quite well in it. We're getting ready to, I wrote a great book <clears throat> that we're getting ready to turn into a film. And okay. It's, uh, called Family Legacy. All right. I had a very prominent father, a guy called Albert Anastasia from New York. And um, I'm telling the truth about a lot of things that happened in the country. And Albert was um, head of Murder, Inc., had his own family. The Anastasia family was turned into the Gambino family. Right. Um, the, um, so we're going to go back in history and we're going to tell a lot of truth about things that went on in the country and what's going on and how it's going. Well, I was just saying, do you feel like if you were to share this truth, would it cause any type of controversy anywhere in the world? No, the book's been out for a few years and uh, you know, I have no yeah. problems at all. So we're and writing two more books. We've got, we're going to do two books, two, two films, and then we're going to turn it into a series. Oh, wow. So um, are you guys going to get up with Netflix to put your series on? Or are you guys going to I think uh, Paramount. Paramount, Paramount yeah. That's going to be nice. Uh, Paramount. Be Paramount Global. Okay. That's nice. So you're coming out of you're coming out of retirement to do this one because you you know you haven't. When's the last time you did a film? I haven't done a film in a few years, but I've written yeah. a couple of scripts and we've got. I'm doing a film in Nevada called Red River, which is a great little horror picture with a foul twist to it. And then I'm going to produce my book. I'll produce the Family Legacy, and I'll probably do something in it. And um, I don't know. There's another picture in Ireland that I'm going to do. I wrote a script on for years ago. It's a, an old classic that was called The Informer. It won four Oscars with Victor McLaughlin. And we wrote another version of the book and come out pretty good. So we're going to do that as well. And I'm building a major studio in Nevada. Really? Yeah, we're, so putting a, we're putting a four million square foot studio out in Nevada, which is direly needed. And we're going to put everything under one roof for the very first time. Every technology for films, television, music, every bit of streaming, every bit of technology, LED, on LED, hologram, the whole nine yards. Wow, hologram, that's amazing. All yeah. that's just amazing. I, I just don't forget about me because I'll be coming up there to visit. You know, I'm stepping out <laughs> into, sure. my, into my acting career as well. You know, <laughs> so don't forget about Keisha Stacks here, you're a wonderful host. And, you know, it was definitely a pleasure talking to you. Like you, you have so much life that you have lived, you know, and your bio is amazing. And, and the fact that you're still adding to your bio is just very inspiring to me. And I'm sure it'd be very inspiring to many others that will be hearing about you. Um, do you have any words of wisdom that you would like to like, you know, leave out there for any youth out here in the world, you know, you know, boxing is a, is a form of like, you know, kind of like self-defense and stuff. Do you have any Box, like- boxing, boxing is a great sport. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, it's gotten away from where it was when, when, I mean, there was a lot of great fighters when I was fighting back in the sixties. And today they just don't fight enough. But, you they know, dance, right? Boxing is a great sport. You know, I, sports are great for anybody. If you're going to be, if you're going to get into the entertainment business and you want to be an actor or an actress, now the best advice I can give you is just be yourself. Take yourself and put it in whatever character you're reading and just be you. You know, and that works out pretty good. That's amazing. I would like to thank you for your time here today. Um, yeah, it's my pleasure. You're in, you're in one of my favorite towns in the, in Jersey, Montclair is a, is, a, is a great little city. Yes, it is. I love Montclair, and that's why I actually came back because, you know, my, we're rooted from here in Montclair. So, you know, it's amazing. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank and you. And don't be a stranger. And you've now just been showcased on the spotlight. Anytime.
But I cannot refrain from tendering to you the consolation that may be found in the thanks of the Republic they died to save. I pray that our Heavenly Father may assuage the anguish of your bereavement and leave you only the cherished memory of the loved lost. The solemn pride that must be yours to have laid so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. Yours very sincerely and respectfully. All my life I've been wondering why, why I can get it all But I just realized nothing could come easy You gotta walk it hard like my neck on Wheezy Day by day I grind like my heart is beating Lord forgive me for the reason why I gotta make it More than the faces the men I see I can never make it It sounds childish but I feel like it Ay, If you like me I promise you will like it I promise you will feel the reason why I gotta eat it Cause this is my season the food I be cooking you will feel it Killing my whole hitter So I can control cheddars Feeling like J. Roll Is the coming the new era Rora, I'm done Get they be calling my rapara Next time y'all see me on the street My nigga you should holla Make sure you stay strong so you wanna pass away I see you holding from a mile away With my eyes closed, I stay up all night This in my block, men they always speak fight The streets ain't smiling, so I gotta stay cocky Man, you wake up, so you never go copy We just live it, we just live it Nobody knows tomorrow, we just live it Lord forgive me, Lord forgive me I don't wanna pay the sorrow I just want peace Please, please, please Don't kill me, please I'm just a little boy I'm just 18 Then they go big like a when I see the pole pole, but we stand up on our feet We fighting for the soul It's time to stand up, my nigga man don't stop I don't roll with weak niggas cause you know I'm John Wick on this shit Cry The politics, credit cards turning to semi, can call it this Into the bracket and knock it the nemesis Or we can put out the scenes and the damages Cause in the end of the wicked the damages Killing the demons and killing the enemies And every use if I believe your energy So we can put the hand into the synergy Tired of being played around like an avatar To make a living in the wood in the daylight Get to the move like a pale light Young people now living in the fake life You can never get stabbed with a fake knife Bleaching, we never make it go white Doing wrong, can never make it do right Darkness, can never mean twilight Now there's a story changing The music knows to be masturbating Left us to be levitating The game is sick, self-medicating for the money and life, they're killing us all, they're making it up to survive Instead of giving us life, we turn into slaves, we got nothing to say We all gonna die one day, but just pray Let forgive you and take your sins away We all gonna die one day, but just pray Let forgive you and take your sins away